Yes, guys. Yes, people. Welcome back to episode six. I think episode six of the Blue Balls podcast. A lot, a lot has happened since the yeah. last episode. Paul has been sacked. Um, Drew against Liverpool. Potentially looking at new managers. We're going to get into all the latest surrounding Chelsea over the last week. Obviously going to be reviewing the Liverpool game as well first because there's nowhere else to start other than that. And yeah, big up everybody that's locked in. Like and subscribe. The road to 40 points continues as always. Hopefully next week is going to be the week where we finally break the 40-point margin because if we don't break it against Wolves, I don't know when we're breaking it. <laughs> but yeah, big up everybody that's locked in. Like, subscribe. As always, check out my channel, check out everyone's socials, and yeah, we'll get into it. Fatter, what are you saying, my guy? How was your yeah, week? All good, all good as always. Normal service resume. And uh-huh. yeah, man, it's been a lot that happened since Saturday, lost to Aston Villa, but we're going to dive into it, into that big time. Duffer. Uh Ben, Ben, what are you saying, my guy? I think you missed the last two games. Good shout, very good shout. How you been? Yeah, year older again now. Um, settling into life as a 27 year old, I feel ancient. I can't lie, you know, I feel like I'm uh, got achy muscles and achy back now all the time from carrying everything. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that, uh, yeah, everything's all good. Um, yeah, missing the defeat to Villa that would have really ruined things. Um, then obviously, we've got the good news that Potter got sacked. Uh, you know, happy to see him go, but. You know, just thinking what could have been, but I don't think it could have been much given what uh, we've seen this season. And then, yeah, the the nil nil draw to Liverpool, you know, where we were clearly the better team. You know, we absolutely were the better team. We had all the chances, and you know, everyone caught a case of uh, Havertz itis and just missed the target. Mm-hmm. Facts, facts. Um, Kev, what are you saying, my guy? How have you been, bro? How's everything? All good, all good. You know. Uh... Oh, depressing, depressing, depressing game Saturday, depressing game yesterday, or uh, a bit of good news coming out, uh, Lewis Enrique, potentially um, in London today for talks, hopefully we can finalise that, get it over the line, bring in the class manager and just try and do the best this season as a write-off now, I'm not expecting that was nothing at yeah. all, um, what I expect to see now is a, a manager to come in and try and implement some style of football, so we can try and build for next season, really. If this, this this season's done, if Enrico comes in now and he can, we can see some kind of changes with the patterns of play and everything else, I'll be happy now just to finish seventh and just crack on for next year. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. You, you and me both. I'm, I'm feeling like it, there's two different sides to each story. Like, I'm hearing one day that Nagelsmann is a favourite for the job. Then we're hearing Enrique is making PowerPoints on every individual player, talking about how he can implement them, the style of play that he wants to get. Chelsea's always been an attractive job, and it still looks like that for now, but there are a few options out there. There's Pochettino that's been linked to the job as well. Ruben Amarim, I don't think is as likely, but he's been put out there. Oliver Glasner as well. We've even been linked to Javi Alonso from Bayer Leverkusen. Um, Out of all of the options, Ben... Actually, no, you know what, Kev, we'll stick with you for this one. Which one's your number one pick out of all of them? Because for me, I, I'm still not even really too sure. The only one I know enough about is oh, Nagelsmann. This, 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 for me, it's difficult because, you know, Lewis Enrique has been out the club game for quite a while. You know, he's got to adjust to life in London. There's so much different points. We can't... I'm not expecting anyone to come in and hit the, the, the ground running straight away anyway with this squad. So we're going to have to be patient. Um, top, the top of the list of that would be him, probably. But if we could hold that to the end of end of the season and get a manager in, I'd like to bring Jose back. I'd like to bring someone back. He knows the club. He's going to fight for the club and he's going to get respect. And there's no one better than Jose, really, to set the helm. Um, I'm thinking with, with Nagel's men... I said it a couple of weeks ago. He hasn't done anything what we couldn't do as ourselves. Bayern Munich won the league of them. Most managers have win. A pass of great and pass would probably go to Bayern and win the league. You know what I'm saying? So he'd, he'd be not high on the list. I think it'd be Lewis and Ray K top for now. If we could hold out to the summer, get a Jose back. Oh, you'd want Jose back? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. What yeah. full time or permanent? Full time permanent. Just, I, just, okay, just, I need just, you to sell me on this one because I'm very shook about the opportunity of Jose coming back. <laughs> I love Jose. I, I, I just, but it's like one of those where it's like yeah. I like just close the book. Yeah. But what are you thinking? I just think I, I think with Jose, I think he absolutely loves and adores the club. We love and adore him. It's a match made in heaven. Plus, I think he's got a point to prove. And he's, he's coming to the wards the end of his career now. I think he could build the foundations for someone else to come in and build something after. I think if we give Joel, say, two, three years, I'm sure we'd be challenging for stuff. Um, if we made him the person who's going to have all the dictatorships or he's in charge of the transfers, in charge of certain players, I'm sure he'd get the respect and I'm sure he'd, he'd do a job and then leave it for someone else to come in after. But the best win at the moment, we need an experienced leader. And you got, you're getting that with Mourinho in there. Mm. Yeah, but the problem is with Mourinho... Um, oh, sorry, I had to jump in here. But, you know, he's Go literally... He's a free season you know, thing. You know, the first season he comes in, builds what he does. Second season, he wins it. Third season, everything goes wrong and he's either sacked or leaves at the end of the season to go to another club. Uh, I love Jose to bits and I think if you want a short-term solution, yeah, get him in. But we're looking for a long-term solution and I don't think Jose as a long-term solution is good for the club. You know, it, I'm not against... quite, quite short. There's, there's no long-term solutions in the football game at the moment. Like, unless you're mm. Pep or Klopp. There's no long, no. Okay, so Simeone, Klopp, and Pep are the only managers that have been in the top top team for the, the last five years. Like long term solutions okay. are totally out of the picture. I think now you're looking for short term fixes. We need to get back on track and look like we're challenging again. We haven't been nowhere near the league, and that's which I'll say with the right amount of money and you know it's going to get the respect. I think he we could be challenging within within a year, two years, and then like I said. We can leave it someone else to take over after two years when he's coming to the end of his retirement. Yeah, but just playing devil's advocate, really. Like we've just signed a bunch of decent players, you know, with squad depths and all that, and we do know that Mourinho has a reputation of pissing off a player or two in the dressing room, and then they're potentially just getting rid of it. You know, we've made all these signings. You know, just as they want them, that's the thing. And I'm more yeah. thinking, you know, get a, a, a player friendly manager. Yeah, who who will get the discipline in them, but get them you know, sort of playing respected football. Again, I'm not yeah. against Jose. I'm really not, but you just got to outline, you know, the negatives and the positives to you know bring in Jose back. And for me, I think yeah. there there are more negatives than positives with Jose. I, I'm again not yeah. slandering the man. Love him. Would love to see him as a manager, but maybe not now. Yeah, he was. I can't run this. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. You're too there, there is, there is a bit of red flag if you want Mourinho back, and I feel like I understand with the with the money that we've got right now, and I just think that if the result doesn't go our way and Bolly doesn't want to back him, he'll be gone in the next two years or so. That's kind of my issue about it. And do I think that he lost? Is he losing his juice? I don't think so because it's Jose Mourinho after all, but. With the squad that we have right now and the direction as a club where we're going, I just think we need to go and get someone else then other than Mourinho that can get the stability back back into the into the club right now. Hmm. See, my thing with Mourinho is I get for mentality purposes, I think he's mm -hmm. unbelievable. In terms of building an us against them mentality, he's unbelievable. In terms of building, maintaining a project, in terms of being a long-term manager, which is what I think the likes of Bowley are looking for. They're looking for more project managers. And part of the reason why Tuchel didn't really work out with him either. That's where I'm not sure with him. And I just feel like with Jose, it's like the time's come and gone, really. Like, I, I like the idea of it. I, I would kind of be a bit tempted. I won't lie. But it's nostalgia for me. I'm only thinking about it from a nostalgic point of view. It's like, yeah, get me Jose Mourinho back. Passionate and everything. I just don't think it would work. I don't think anything else would work for us. But, yeah. Mourinho, I don't think he'd be the right guy for us. The okay, guy who has been linked as an interim choice has been Frank Lampard. Um, Fatter. I'm going to go to you for this one. If there was no options till the end of the season, 
we couldn't get Nagelsmann or Enrique in, or they wanted to wait till the end of the season, for example, would you take Frank Lampard at the wheel for the last 11 or 12 games or so? Negative. Probably I would take probably. Frank Lampard okay. as an oh, assistant no. manager and John Terry as an assistant. I just think there's too many of red flag that Frank Lampard, he's been he's been managing Everton and also past previously with Chelsea as well. But I just think with the with the relationship right now, again, um, even though that we're not good at the moment, and I understand like he's gonna start this uh, his one of his favorite player, but I just think it's gonna get <laughs> bad image for, for our club you know? and. And he's also don't forget as well he's retiring up, and already already, already no. have, a, have a have a family in it so let him let him ha- enjoy his retirement let him mm. improving his coaching ability then come back into the team. Sorry, speaking of retirement, I think you know this, this man who's just interfered in this uh, podcast needs uh... to stay retired. Literally, just leans in my ear and says, "Harry Redknapp, no mate, no." I said, "Harry Redknapp." <laughs> He said, Harry Redknapp. Ah, he Harry. said, Harry Redknapp. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's I'm the name I heard in a minute. Um, it, 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 I'm not freaking say Roy, Roy Hodgson, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Might as well. We'll get Pardew yeah, back or as well. Crap. Yeah, someone like but, that. Some old geezer. Big up. To, and anyway, um, Kev, um, Lampard, what's your thoughts on a potential return for Super Frank? When I was watching the game last night, uh, Wow, I love to see him. I love to see him smile. I love to see him happy. Love the guy, to bits. But nah, no way. I, I don't not even Frank and touch everything together. I just nah. I just I just can't see anything happening. He's had his chance before, and he and he flopped. He's had his chance at uh, Everton, and he's flopped there as well. I think he he done all right at Derby. I think that's his level for now. I think him a championship, learning his trade, working his way up to a Chelsea. By the time he gets to Mid forties, yeah, but right now, I just can't see him doing anything. I just think it's going to be another devastating flop. I, 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 the thing for me is with Lampard, I don't want him to come and to the end of the season be a flop again. So it looks like he's, you know, but that's why the interim wouldn't be bad because, yeah. like, if it's a case of yeah. the last eleven games or something, you're not expecting yeah. nothing. You're just here to like steady the ship, maybe win a couple games and. We're not expecting him, okay, you need to get us top four or you need to get us to the Champions League. That's why my whole thing with Lampard is just, if we're going to be crap, if we're going to be 11th place and terrible, I'd rather be crap with Lampard than with Potter or Bruno or anything. I'd just rather give it to Lampard. At least the fans would be a little bit more upbeat. At least maybe some of the players would be more as well because they recognise him. Some of the younger players came through with Frank Lampard, so it'd be a bit more of a recognisable face. I don't know. Maybe it would be better for the emotional side of the game. But in terms of long-term future, no. Just be here till the end of the season. We can give you a little yeah. goodbye and everything that we didn't get to give you because it was in lockdown and all of that. And then, yeah, yeah. in the summer, peace. 100%. I, you, you've uh, spoke about the positives of the situation. I think I went with the negatives. You know, um, mm. but I'm just trying to protect one of our legends, you know, a great servant to the club. Yeah. You know, um, but for me... It would make sense if there was no one else available and we just, like you said, stay the ship to the end of the season and then get someone in at the end of the season. What's going to be um, giving us that uh, that stability for the next couple of years? But for Lampard, I think he's got to make the choice. Lampard and Terry's not a bad shot to the end of the season and getting someone in. So, yeah, you probably are right in that, in that sense. That's well. Have to see what happens on that front. Yeah. I think for most of us, we don't really have any... I think we're on the same thought process of Potter being sat. Just should have been a couple of weeks ago. Better late than never. We move. All kind of agreement on that. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. Cool. Um, moving on to the Liverpool game, though. Chelsea yeah. nil. Liverpool nil. Bruno Saltor's first game in charge. Frustrating, I think, is the words that comes to mind because everything was right except the finish. Yeah, Kovacic was a little bit iffy in midfield. He wasn't great. Other than that, I thought we still did our job in midfield in spite of it. Defensively, we were excellent. Just the same old crap up top. Ben, I know you won a Liverpool win probably more than all of us combined. What was your thoughts on that game, bro? What was your thoughts on that? 
Oh, uh, we were the better team. We were the much better team. You know, we created more chances. We were just absolutely, we we just bottled it when it came to finishing the chances. It's like the team are too scared to finish, and it's painful to watch. You know, when you got the likes of Jao Felix, Mudrick, Havertz. You know, all these players that are meant to be, you know, everything they've been, you know, done in the past. And you know, you think, oh, they can do it, and then they're missing. You know, these aren't players that normally miss. There's something going on. Were they obviously like so disheartened through Potter, like playing with Potter and you know losing every week? They just lost the will to play. I don't know. You know what's going to happen with the new manager? I don't know. Um, but we played Liverpool off the pitch, but Liverpool didn't really care about the game. You could tell with their lineup. You know, Van Dyke, no Van Dyke, no Salah. You know, I mean, so they're playing worst Liverpool with... team I've seen come to the bridge, and they got a clean sheet, and that says everything about us. I've seen worse. <laughs> I've seen worse. Honestly, it's just it's terrible. It's terrible. But we just wasted our chances. Yeah, same old crap as always. Um, Kev, I, we could try and look it on a more positive note, at least. Like, where do you see improvements, at least from the last game under Graham Potter? Do you see improvements within the squads? Or what, what's your thoughts coming out of that? 100%. Um, we got to just think um, when we was in a similar situation with Lampard and Mantuka took over and it only took a couple of weeks and we seen a massive turnaround, didn't we? You know, the players looked like the new that was... We look under Lampard, we look lost and that's how we look under Butter and this new Bruno guy. You know, I think if we've got a manager who implements a style of football, Lewis and Rike, we've got that tick attacker to, to, to a TNA. and a You know, with Barcelona, Roma played a decent level of football as well. If we get a manager that knows what they're doing, go into that training pitch, implement a style of football saying, you're doing this, you're doing that. Like we've heard, he's got a plan for all the players. And then the, the lads will look like they're not going to do right now. It just seems like the lads are getting the ball, they're going into the final third, they don't know where to pass, to shoot. It's just, you know, it's all over the place. So I think once we get a manager what's going to bring a style of football, I think things will start looking up 100%. Because we haven't got the players to do it. Mm. You can see it just off the way that we were playing. Um, Fatter, thoughts on how we were defensively as opposed to going forward? Because I think defensively like... we look fine. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we look fine defensively. I just think that a bit of for me, my problem is that the slower up build up play from the back, cooler barley making a um, couple of easy passes mistakes, and also Cucurella looks. Sometimes it's a bit inconsistent. He's been good in one phase, but he's been bad. But for me, it's like the problem is, is that from the back, I have a problem that we don't look good without Thiago Silva and our team. And I just think that we miss his leadership at the back. And with Koulibaly yesterday, most of the times I've seen, he looked reckless. He looked kind of like out of shape, out of nowhere. Also, there's a bit... Of, one moment that for me a miscommunication in the back and and was it really shames that I look angry about it as well. So what Kulubali is that like I would love love to give him one one last chance, but it's it's literally icing on the thin at the moment, man, with his performance mm-hmm. yesterday. And I just want Diego Silva to be back in the team to bring that mm-hmm. stability leadership at the back. Yeah, I'm with you on that one. I think Kulubali had a better performance. Better performance, but it's still not the sort of composed one you'd get off Thiago Silva. Like, there was a couple little mistakes in game and everything like that. One of them, though, one of the defenders, Wesley Fafana. we got to have a conversation because this guy, to me, is a signing of the summer. Like, 75 million, I know it's a lot, but you don't talk about the price tag when the player performs. Compare it to all the other guys who signed in the summer, he looks like an absolute tank. Ben, what's your thoughts been on Wesley Fafana? Not just yesterday, but just this season in general. You can tell the difference when he plays. You know, he's just so energetic. He's like always in there. You know, you can sort of question his height sometimes. Like before you signed him, though, we wanted like a really tall defender and everyone look at Wesley Fafana. But he's been a brilliant. You know, he's always been there. You know, he's making those goal line clearances. I mean, that heading, that clearance yesterday. For the figures for Fabinho shot, yeah, the Fabinho shot, he just edits it away like instinctively. I mean, he's that close to the goal line, the ball's coming in quickly. He can only get it in one place, and he does. It's beautiful stuff. And 
yeah, you know, I'd say in the modern day, you know, 75 million, that's it's, you can a bit eye watering, but you're getting what mm, you pay. Van Dijk, defender, Van Dijk was just something to run off. exactly, you know. Yeah. But back then, you know, money was a bit more like confined. Nowadays, you're getting stupid transfers, you know, like back before, back before, you know, transfers got broken wide open, and you started just opening open bidding 100 million for a player, you know, like. This was about five years ago. This would probably been like a forty million pound defender, and even then, it would have been expensive. But again, would have been worth the money. Mm. I, I get you on like seventy five million is still a lot. It is a little bit in, of a lot. But technically, with when, when you play well, people don't notice that exactly. Yeah, and no, to no, some no. players as well, you know how yeah. the price tag usually gets to your head, and it probably impacts yeah. your performance. It hasn't. He's playing like he's twenty million. He's just there to play and do his job, and that's what I like. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant performance from him. Um, another player who was making a return, first start in ages. Big up, and I've been worried about what he'd be like coming back from fit from injury. But seriously, I feel like the the phrase "form is temporary, class is permanent" mate, is just I'm not going to go mate. What Beautiful. a performance! What a, it's like he never left. I mean, we could say we needed him, but. Yeah, when he's on the pitch, he's like he's been playing every week. He 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 was up for it. Love that. Love that from Canada. Yeah, and like I think he he looked even improved. Like yeah. one of my biggest critics of Kante has been that final pass. I've always yeah. said like so he doesn't really get it right. Yesterday yeah. he made so many chances. Even like the ball through to Havertz, I think for the offside goal, I think it came off the N'Golo Kante ball. He made like four of them in that second half. So he looks like a. Not a different player, but he looks revitalized because last season he wasn't great. There was a lot of poor performances from him. I was worried he was starting to decline and the injuries were starting to get to him. If this surgery has completely re-energized him and he's back to his best and he stays fit, I don't think there'll be any debate about re-signing him. I don't think there'll even be a debate about the wages. They'll be like, just you know what? Whatever you want, take it. Just in time. I, I was never. Never in doubt about Kante from the start. I just think he worked himself into the ground with his style of football. He's right back one minute, left wing the other. Like he's up and down, up and down. I just think he, for the last couple of seasons, he wasn't true. He wasn't, I think, too cool. Didn't really use him properly. I think we never had another holding player. If we had another player or similar to him, we could have probably used them both. He was playing in the Premier League. He's playing the Champions League, FA Cup. And you've got to think, everybody, we're all human beings. You're going to have a breakdown in, in, in your, your muscle tissues at some point if you're not looked after properly on the feet. He needed a little break just to recover. And now we're going to probably see for the next two years the can say that we've seen over the last couple of years. I was never in doubt the guy will come back. He's an absolute world-class player. And like I said a couple of weeks ago, if we can get him... Um, back in form now for this Real Madrid game, he's he's going to be so vital to us even getting a, a, a shimmer of hope, you know. So, you know, thank God he's back and you know he look, he's looking good. Mm -hmm. This is my thing as well because if he stays fit and we continue to get other midfielders around him, we don't even necessarily have to play Kante every week. And I've always said if you manage Kante correctly, that's insane depth. If you yeah. can bring him on to like maybe kill a game off or if you save him for the bigger games and then he's just like your little secret weapon or something, that keeps him, that improves his longevity and it also impro improves the overall quality of the squad. Like Imagine being able to say you don't have to play N'Golo Kante as peak. That says a lot about the strength of the midfield. Midfield's been our biggest weakness this season. Probably even yeah. as bad, if not worse, than our attack has been. He made and Enzo look better as change. well. The mm -hmm. most most important thing that is Enzo, because Kante is a DM, but then you you make Enzo as more progressive and more more creative as well. I think that's Kante what, is more of a box, the box, box the box person. I don't. For me, a DM is an anchor. He's someone who's just going to sit like a Declan Rice. I don't think Kante wants to press up sometimes. He wants to sit sometimes. He does. I don't think he wants to sit. You can tell by by the language. He wants to press and get the ball higher up. We need, like I said a few weeks ago, we ain't had a DM since Matic. That's the last anchor we had. Someone who's not going to come past the halfway line. 
And I think that's the thing for me. I, I think he is a ball winning midfielder in that sense where he can win the ball, but he's not uh, an anchor. We need that's what we need now. We need someone who can sit so can tight and Enzo can go up, do their thing up the pitch a bit more. Yeah, I, I think for me, like if we had a DM, the ideal scenario going into Madrid would be DM, Kante is the eight, Enzo. and then you have Enzo, the license to roam forward and to keep himself around that area because he's also great defensively, so you can have a little bit of a higher press too. That sort of a midfield would probably be one of the best in Europe if everybody's switched on because we know Enzo's quality. The fact Enzo managed to look this good with such a mess in front of him and around him, just says levels about the quality of the player. Hell, even yesterday, Enzo was cooking. Brilliant performance from him, very aggressive. One thing I like about him is that he's always in the referee's ear too. They'll never let anything go down. He's got aggression to him. He's very competitive. On the ball, you can see his quality amazing defensively. Yeah. He's got such a pinger going forward. I don't know about seeing them in a two-man pivot, but in a three-man yeah. midfield of a DM... Um, Fatter, like to me, that seems like the dream. But also, do you have any names of DM that you're looking for? Like, Lavia is the main pick for me. If there's any, um, I've had in my mind probably Kudiakone from Borussia Mönchengladbach, and also the Sociedad player as well. Um, and was it Zubi Zamendi? Uh, Zubi Mendy, sorry, Zubi Mendy, yeah, Zubi Mendy. And was it one of um. Also, the Sporting Lisbon guy, Ugarte. Oh, yeah. I've heard that name a couple of times. I need to watch more of him before I make That's some big jumps. from the World Cup. He looked... He's... he's yeah, such, Amrabat. Such, he's at Fiorentina. Yeah, yeah. The, um, what's it? The Moroccan one. The World Cup. He, yeah. he looks absolutely solid. He did in the middle. Gets stuck in. He gets the ball and pings it. In the, and, and he wants to sit as well. I didn't really see him come past the halfway line. And that's... We need a DM that's going to sit at the top of everybody in the moment. It's got to be Declan Rice. There's no one else. If you know, if we can tempt him to come, he's the DM for us for the next seven years. He's Terry, John Terry of the future for us. Like that kind of idol. You know, he's going to be England and Chelsea captain. And he, also, he, as well as him playing DM, he can play defence as well. So you're getting the best of both. You know, um, or you know, because I don't think we'll get him. Like you said, I think. He's going to want Champions League football. We ain't going to be able to offer him that, unfortunately. I think that's an Arsenal move, yeah. 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 I just yeah, think that Carrasco... I just Sorry, think man. that Carras going to go to Arsenal unless Jorginho is going to leave the, the, the end of the season. Doesn't mm, make sense. Nah, Jorginho is just there for depth. Yeah. He's just there for depth. They're not trying to start that him. Sure. Day, I've heard some rumours he, he wants to go back to Italy after if if in case Arsenal win the league. Oh, I hope so. I really hope so. But yeah, we we'll have to see what have to see what DM we bring in. Let's move a bit further forward up the pitch, though. Sadly, we've got to talk about the attack, the the bane of our existence, mm -hmm. the one thing that will constantly, constantly hold us back. Um, Kai Havertz, for a oh, lot of people, yeah. that today was the turning point. Well, yesterday. My, my biggest question was why yesterday was when I, I've seen that performance about 50 times in the last two years as a bit as a minimum. But for a lot of people, the patience ran out. I think it was partly because they deluded themselves into thinking the last two games could have been a little bit more. But it is what it is. Um, ben, have us. Where, where, where do we want to start, brother? Where do we want to start? Don't just keep him gone. Uh, I'm, I'm tired of him. I uh, he he has this thing. He's so, he's the most overprotected player in Chelsea at the moment, all because of a Champions League winning goal. Um, like I'm sorry, but he's been dropping stinkers almost every week. He he comes back for one or two games and disappears again. And I'm just I'm sick of it. I'm absolutely sick of it. And um, yeah, so like honestly, um, just get Havertz gone. I don't like him. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you, Kev. I know like, we spoke about Havertz earlier. I mean, not earlier, on the tier list. And then we said, uh, what was it? Last chance. How, yeah, how yeah, was your thoughts yeah. on Havertz after that one? You still in last chance saloon or is it done and dusted? For him? Oh, my life. I, I think... Oh, I put my hands up. I got excited. 
you know, he scored a couple of goals. He looked good against Dortmund. He scored an absolute beauty against uh, Leicester. And, you know, and um, the last two games, he's just back again, isn't he? He's back. He had the ball out on the left, and he would think he was one on one with their left back. That uh, Shimmy Cast, one of his name is um, their left back. Um, yeah, he's done a, a little step over or something, showed a bit of pace, showed a bit of agility, and he just looked up and, and passed it. And he was one on one, like literally, all you had to do is let the ball pass and go. And he, I don't think he's even confident in himself to beat a player, he doesn't look confident side to side. It's nah, I just put my hands up. I think it's actually time for him to go on that, and I don't think I'll change my mind, even if he scores a hat trick in the next three games. I think. We can't be fickle as fans. <laughs> this, this, is the, this is the thing, though. We can't be fickle as fans. We can't say one thing one week. We've got to go ahead with it. Like I said, I would have given my last chance. I think now he's just proving yet again that he's just too inconsistent and not built for the Prem. We need a tank up there. We need an absolute tank who's going to hold the ball up, try and beat a man. You know, Costa. Costa was the last striker we had. You know, we haven't had a DM and a striker since Costa and Matic, and we, that's seven years. That goes to show uh transfers has been, it's not been good at all, isn't it really? So if we can get, like I said, a Tony or an Osman, someone who's just going to hold the ball, got a bit of pace, something about him, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely adamant that we can get a 20, 30 goals next season. But with Havertz, there's not a position where he suits, he, he can't play left, he can't play right wing, attacking forward, there's nowhere at all that I've seen him shine for us, so see you later. He's got to go, man. He's got to go now. Yeah, they just want to shoehorn him everywhere, bro. We've had this debate for three seasons over what position he's in. I've uh, been saying it. He is a nine that cannot finish. Yeah. He's a ten that cannot create. He's a midfielder with no defensive awareness. He's a winger who can't take on his man and has no skill set. Well, so no what's the point? I, I, I don't get it. I just, I I it's such a him off the bench, very man, quickly, and what, what really annoys me here, we have... For Fana in as a striker. We have Aubameyang as a striker. These guys can do a better job as a striker than Havertz. I'm sorry, but I am tired of seeing this Don get pushed off the ball every single time he runs forward, making one flick skill passes and all the girls fall in love with him. Like I'm sorry, but watch the actual footballing aspect of Kai Havertz. There is none. There is literally people getting barged off the ball uh, when Kai goes off there because he is too timid and weak when he gets barged off the ball. When he misses sitter after sitter, it is stupid. How many sitters are you going to have to miss until people turn yeah. on your back? People looked at yesterday and said, you know what? I think Kai's a bit crap. We've known Kai's been crap for ages. This man disappeared yeah. after Porto. The real Kai Havertz clearly got kidnapped and we got replaced with this stupid... Um, wish.com replica. Of he, didn't do, he didn't do anything before the, he didn't do anything before the Champions League final, really. Remember yeah, under Lampard. Like, he's probably one of his better seasons yeah. was on He did Lampard. nothing, but I'd say he had he had COVID half the season, so I don't really yeah. hold that. Plus first season tax. I don't mind giving people oh. time to adapt and everything, but he hasn't yeah. built on it. If you ask me what habits has improved on since his first day at Chelsea, I can't he, tell you. He's English. I can't tell you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really tell you. yeah, he's English. <laughs> Yeah. He's <laughs> the criticism is very warranted, and also yeah. I feel like if if the new manager coming in, whether it's Nagelsmann or Enrique, what are they going to do with him? Because with Enrique, he said that he wants a mobile striker to come in that, and also to fit the style of of his play, and I think that man will probably be Osherman. Yeah, Osherman or Tony for me. I'm with you. Yeah, that yeah. would actually be like a physical number nine. Will win his duels. Will actually bury chances. Oshiman's very yeah, good in tight situations. He'll score goals that you don't expect him to be scoring. Yeah, Tony ball, will give you more creativity. He'll bring more yeah. out of the team around him, and he'll be able to contribute with his goals too. That's what we need. Question is, who yeah, plays better yeah, than Kunku? Yeah. Though that's the question. Who do you reckon plays better within Kunku? Because we we can't just sign in Kunku and not oh. have him in our plans. Tony. I think I I'll go for Tony. I go, go for Tony. Tony. Because Oshiman, I'm not too beast. sure about his go on, go on, Kev. Go on, Kev. It's, it's Tony, he's just a beast. He, he's hold up playing with but we just need someone who's gonna hold the ball up late on, and then when he gets into the wide positions that can take a ball on, 
take a player on. And Tony as well as that, he's, he's got a good assist ratio as well, isn't he? He, he? he knows where to put the ball. He's got to come in and he's proven already that he can score in the Premier League and that's the key for me. The, the, you know, Osterman, it's not that much of a risk because we know his quality, but we, t- we told him he scored 15 goals, 16 goals a season with Brentford. So imagine if he gets the service from Nkunku and the Felix playing next to him, mate. He's going to get 20, 30, 100%. I can probably bank on that. He's going to get 20, 30 next year. He comes to us, 100%. Yeah, Tony for me would be better in terms of getting the best out of people around him as well as himself. Because um, with Oshimem, I haven't heard the best about his build-up play. He's more the sort of guy who doesn't in really box. get too involved and you go away and you go yeah. bring service to him, which isn't bad. It's not necessarily bad because his movement's good. He'll get himself into right positions and he's physical. So he will dominate other defenders. He won't make it easy for them. But Tony... I think is just so much more well-rounded. He'll hold up the ball. He'll link up well. He'll assist. He'll create. He's brilliant at penalties. He's yeah. brilliant in terms three of just kicks, natural three kicks as well. Yeah, three, three kicks, kicks too. Like, well. I yeah, don't know yeah. what. The, I don't know the weakness with him, other than you know yeah. maybe the odd bet here or there. But other than that, like I don't really yeah. see his weaknesses. To me, yeah. that's the guy who, if he's not banned. I need everything put on there. Put whatever price tag Brentford add and throw a forward in there to sweeten the deal. I don't care who you put. Just throw in a forward. For Fofana plus, for plus 50, 60 mil. Let for Fofana yeah, Fofana, Brozier, Pulisic, Ziyech, Havertz. Two. Oh, no, Take, buy one, get one free. You can have two. <laughs> just, so, just, so, just sell them. Just don't even swap the old. So you can have them for free. Amazing. <laughs> yeah, that guy you, that is my dream striker. Yeah. Actually, no, don't put habits in there. They'll raise the fee. They'll raise the fee. Not worth it. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Tony, that would be my dream signing. And Cuckoo Felix coming in as well. So that's going to be 210. To me, it's like, well, he's going to be gone anyway. So we might as well. Felix, by the way, what was you guys' thoughts on his performance? Because I've seen a lot of people trying to bring down his performance too. I didn't think he was that bad. I think, yeah, his finishing does need to be a little bit better. There is a case of him being a bit too selfish. But on the ball, I think he's just levels clear of what we've seen from the likes of Kai. Even though they are younger, Mudrik and Madweki, I would say as well. I think he's been our best forward since January. And I'd keep him. I'd keep him personally. You 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 said you said he wasn't being he was not being selfish in that, but at the end of the day, does does he trust Havers to finish that off? That's why he always oh. when he had he had that one on one chance, that's why he takes it on his own. Because he don't trust Havertz to to do the job for him, and yesterday is mm. I think that some of the fans have been very harsh in some ways. It's I think it's because that don't forget as well he was playing alongside Havertz, and it's it's like a supporting role behind Havertz. But at the end of the day, what what people think is about Felix that he's selfish in that. You should ask yourself some question: Does Felix also trust Havertz to finish that? The, the chances of, and that's the problem about it. That's why we've been criticizing week in, week out, and saying that he's been one of our best attacker this season. Yeah, yeah, I think he's been our best this season, to be honest. I don't even know if I'd pick a best attacker. Maybe it's Felix by default, but it's like we got 29 league goals in April. Really, can't even I mean. pick most of them. Realistically, though, like the people that are criticising Felix are looking at the end product only. They're looking at the lack of finishing. They're looking at you know the shots going over the bar, what puck just past the post, mm-hmm. straight at the keeper. They're not looking at what he does beforehand. They're not looking at the space he creates, the uh, passes that he's capable of, you know, the chances that he actually yeah. has created since we've actually bought, got him on loan. Before we had Felix, we were even worse up front. Didn't know it was you know, possible considering what we've seen, but this man's come in, you know, he's wormed his way through defenders. He's opened up play so much more times. And that is what's made him the best attacker going forward. Just because of what he does before the end products. If we end up having one in a game, you know, like thankfully, you know, at Leicester, yeah. we were very grateful, you know, and he really ran the show at Leicester. I, I still stand with what I said a few weeks ago. I can see the intention. I can still the, the quality Everything right now looks like he's on the way, but 
I think he needs to show it over consistent. It's still three months left of the season. If he can carry on the way he's going now, by all means, sign him. I think he's not in the team to finish. He's, that's not yeah. his job, really. He's playing as an attacking forwarder. His job is to solely drop into those positions near the D in the centre of the pitch, turn, can he do a little skill and can he play an attacking player in like awesome and that's it. If he can get into those attacking positions to score a goal, maybe, yeah, finish. But that's not really his job, you know what I mean? I think he showed enough for me that he's got that skill, the trickery, the agility, you know. Even when the, that chance where he took it on his chest, I think it was favourites playing the ball, took it on his chest, brilliant. But, um, took it down, bang, shot and goal. Those little bits of skill like that, we haven't really had a player like that in a long time. So, mm -hmm. if you can carry on the way he's going now, yeah, um, I think he's definitely going to be a hit next year. Yeah. That's my thing as well. He's been here like three months and I'm seeing this already. From someone who needs to adapt. What happens when he's adapted? What happens if he does start getting his finishing sword? Because it's not a case of he's shooting wide all the time. Just hitting the post. That is millimetres. Yeah. That's like two millimetres from a goal. That's why I look at Felix and it's like, take your time. Take your time. Just sign that brother up immediately. Immediately. Absolutely. But yeah, on the uh, Liverpool game, any other thoughts anyone wanted to bring up on that? Or possibly? Kind of, uh, uh, I just, uh, I oh just yeah, yeah, yeah. We do need to talk on Kovacic. Fatter, we'll get to that point in a little. Yeah. Second, but on Kovacic, probably would be better to just let him go because like it's been another poor performance from him. He's not wasteful, had a good season. Wasteful. Oh, yeah. Very sloppy. How one? Uh, if, if we can get an. If, if, yeah, if we can get another ball carrier that can do a similar job, but he's better in the final third, let him go. Um, like I said a few weeks ago, there's not many players. But I haven't seen it as much the last few months, but when he gets the ball in them tricky positions, he can dribble out of positions and he can link the player. But when he gets into the second third, he doesn't cross the ball, he doesn't shoot on target, he doesn't look like he's got that awareness to, to play a through ball or anything in that final third. So if we can find a player similar to him, who can carry the ball like he does, but he's better at shooting. Yeah, by all means, get him gone. But I think if we can't replace him, let's keep him for another couple of seasons because I think he's one of the experienced players in the squad who's been there. Five Champions League speaks for itself. I think he can still give something to the club in regards to the leadership. This is the thing, though, because it's not just about form. He's in the Mount situation. One year left in the summer. So if you don't resign, yeah. We didn't, the we question is, would you resign? We, we, we got him for cheap anyway. I think he was part of the Hazard deal, wasn't he? Um, Forty million. Yeah. Really has a, yeah, it, yeah. We got him for wasn't that much anyway. I think he's earned forty million pound over four seasons, mate. Works out to ten million pound a season. So if we if he just stays for a season and he goes on the free, we haven't really took a massive loss compared to. A favourite, so we signed for 75, and he's going to probably go for 30. So we're going to take losses anyway, and we're left, right, and centre. But I think it's time to probably shed some of the deadwood out of the squad. Hmm. I just, I just having a thought about this as well. And um, yesterday's system, I because I, I what I see, what I saw yesterday is like I don't expect him to go around the pitch dribbling everyone. And building that offensive play for the most of the part of that game, because I feel like that's not that's not his role though. He, I think he serves to to kind of like protecting, relieve the team in the middle. Who protecting? So what you're saying is the deeper one out of the freedom? Yeah. And so my, my thing wasn't that though. It was, it was it wasn't even the misses. It was in possession. He was just very sloppy with his passing. Rubbish. Yeah, he was rubbish yesterday. Even his, like I said, even his, he, Kovacic for me, was, he was so good at getting the ball from defensive areas, turning the half turn and dribbling there into the attacking positions and letting the ball go. We don't see that now. It's either a confidence issue or, he's, or he just doesn't know what he's doing. But I, I want to see that Kovacic is old and I want to see it back immediately because there is a I player there. He, yeah. yeah. I just don't In think the he's... Point, he, yeah. I just don't think he's the bad bunch of oh, that of oh, that the worst ones. I think Havertz, I say Havertz was the worst ones yesterday. Oh yeah, Havertz was the worst, but I think Kovacic was second. I think Kovacic was a respectful I, second. I say Kulubali second. 
could have. I, I thought he was sloppy like once or twice. Other than that, I didn't think he was that bad. Kovacic was losing the ball for fun. I think as a centre back, Koulibaly was the worst centre back, but there was a higher standard. The defence, I didn't think, made too many mistakes. Even Cucurella had like one or two, but that was about it. Um, Fafana was basically flawless, didn't do anything wrong. Yeah. But Kovacic, very sloppy, very wasteful finishing. Havertz, nothing, just absolutely nothing. Chilwell, I thought, faded out a little bit. Reese James. Good defensively, not really great offensively. Unlucky with the as well. Yeah, unlucky with the goal too. Unlucky with the goal. You know what? It's as if James at the moment to show what I think the getting the balls in attacking positions and the probably say a couple of years ago you had a Giroud in there, you wouldn't even hesitate to bang it in there. But now you got you look up, you see Felix Habits. and you see a Sterling or you see a Hayfords. It's just like <laughs> you know. You want it to be, as a wing back or winger, you want it to be second nature. You just want to look up, see a Giroud or a target man, bang, straight in. Now he's looking up, thinking, oh, I might as well just pass it back, keep possession, because goes into the box, they're just going to win. <laughs> the, the other team are just going to win the header and get get possession. So I think he needs, Shulwa and, and James, they need a target man in there, 100%. I think we're not going to yeah. see the best that your wing is with no one in the middle. Mm, yeah. Makes more sense of that one. Um, just before we wrap things up, we'll go into the Wolves game. Um, Saturday, 3 p.m. kickoff. Not really the best of away grounds for us. And to be fair, I'm not. Yeah, our record hasn't really been all great. There. I think we've only won once in the Premier League at that ground. No, five two. Uh, yeah. Five two. Yeah, yeah. I think it's the only time. Eighteen nineteen, we lost. No, we, we won on the Lampard. We lost in the second season one. on the Lampard. We beat them and 5 then one about 10, 10 years ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. 11, 12. They came up right when, 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 we had, when, we had, when we had that blue... Sh- with the blue yeah, but that was a different the, Wolves. Yeah. That Wolves didn't have yeah, the money true. or the yeah, yeah. they got. Yeah, true, Since they've come true, up true, to the true. Premier League, I think we've only beaten them that Lampard season. Everything else yeah, has been an L or a draw. And I kind of think it's going to be the same energy again. I, I, I don't know what to expect from it. Yeah, I, can see I think the midfield draw. will be a tasty no, battle. No. I don't think we're going to get battered anymore, but no, we have to no. score. We have to score. We're not going to score, though, are we? Like, it's, mm-hmm. he is gonna, you're looking now and you're thinking, who's going to score? That's the thing now. Unless we bring uh, Abamian back and get him firing or performing, we're not going to score a goal. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we're not going to score. Obo will, will be out the squad and doing Fortnite streams again on Twitch. And fair play to him. I'll probably watch that instead of the second half if it goes down to being crap. Because, yeah, guys, if you didn't know, I, I will not be at Wolves away for anybody watching. I need a break. Uh, it's my uh, birthday weekend. I will not. Irish, You're not going Irish, anywhere. Irish, You're going either. Oh, I'm going to place in there. Okay, if you're going. I'm going to place in there for that. I'm going. I'm only coming because it's down the road for me. And I'm, I'm from Warsaw, so Wolverhampton's literally next door. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's uh, decent. Of course, we've got train strikes wrong. and everything. It's like, nah. I'm, 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 I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, I wanted to go back to the bridge. I ain't been to the bridge since last year. I usually just go to away games. I absolutely hate the atmosphere at the bridge in a minute. It just sucks, man. I it's can't, not been good this season, season, bro. I don't blame you. Yeah, I have to travel far. I mean, Bloody I have bloggers. to travel far. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have to yeah, I have to tra- I'm up on my time, man. I have to travel far, though, man. I mean, I live up north, so for me to try to spend my money to go down there to see a nil-nil and two nil losses, I can't. Until we start kicking up again, I'll come back and the atmosphere is better. But I prefer away days. I think that's. I'd say get... get a Madrid ticket. Yeah. Atmosphere will cook for that game, if anything. Other than that, Madrid. I'd leave it. Yeah, I'd leave it. Get a Madrid yeah. ticket. The atmosphere will be good for that. Yeah, Everything I, I, I want to try and get one. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what we can do. Well, depending on the first leg, maybe wait till that. Because if we get bad 4-0, forget it. Forget it. Um, Fata, yeah. well, what mm. are you feeling for Wolves away, my friend? What are you feeling? I'm just hoping that we get a new manager by the time then. Because I've been, I've been reading some stuff today. And it's been kind of tug of war between Nagelsmann and Enrique. And whoever comes before by the time before Saturday will be ready then. And hopefully... We'll see the the first few bits of the new managerial yeah. single right, one, so, a bit of sorry. you know, a bit of flair. But yeah, hopefully, if we get a new manager, we're, we're going to get a win. 
So just on that, just one point, um, and this isn't any sources. This is just a you know my thought process. Personally, I think it's going to be Nagelsmann because if you add up the timeline, obviously Bayern sacked Nagelsmann for Tuchel, and suddenly when Nagelsmann is available, that's when the green light's gone to sack Potter. Makes sense. Uh, so just. Hmm. Yeah, you know, I, I think yeah. that's Nagelsmann because I feel like the plan is Nagelsman. You know, now that he's uh, a, you know, able to manage another I, club, we've got to pay by. I him. think. Pro- yeah. Hang on, Ben. No, go, on, go. On. I, I think. Pro- I think personally, um, Nagelsmann did, he, and he was favourite to take over, and then they've looked at other alternatives, and I think now Luis Enrique is coming for it, and he's literally just took the flight straight into London today. I think he's going to secure it now. I think yeah, he's got, got he's won the champion. You got to think he's won the he's, he's won. The, I think a key factor to it is won the Champions League before as well. So once these Americans, they're not the smartest people in there. They're going to think, oh, he's won the Champions League before. Comes in, he might do it again. And he, he's proved he, he's in his style of football. You got to think in the World Cup, the, the Spain team he had wasn't the best, and he went and it's the smack the team seven nil. And the style of football we was watching was brilliant. So I think his style of football suits yourself. I think he's going to have a plan for the players. He's won the Champions League before. He's done well at Roma, which wasn't the best team. And he's worked to the best players in the world with Neymar, Messi, Suarez, etc. So, it's, you know, I think for me, he's probably done enough now to secure it. And I hope he has. I think he's the best choice for now. I want Nagelsmann. Because I think Nagelsmann will be key within Kunku next season as well. Already worked with him. He's, he's worked at Vidal Vivel as well. That's a key point. Yeah. That's an, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not ruling that. I think he was six or three at the back more. And that was Suta's yeah. better. I think Enrique is going to go to a four. Okay, four. That four, will suit us now. Maybe next season with a DM. Maybe that would work. And a striker and a goalkeeper, obviously. But in terms of the squad we have right now, I think Nagelsmann suits it just a little bit more. Yeah. It's a little bit more. But, yeah, we'll have to see what happens on next week's show anyway. Guys, mm-hmm. do have to wrap up. It has been another unbelievable episode of the Blue Balls podcast. Hopefully, when we come back, there'll be a win. We might be doing this after the Madrid game. So, hopefully, we haven't been absolutely battered. But we'll see what, what happens. Why have you just said that, Yeah, my, my been a, why have you just uh, said accidental jinx. My accidental jinx. If we lose 4-0, it's my fault. So, we'll address 4-0! That. Mate, it's, yeah, it's gonna be. It's it's gonna be. It's gonna be. I. It's gonna be a a, a beating man. I kind of know. Mm-hmm. I know it is. It's gonna be. I, don't I, even get, don't swinging. get yourself. Yeah. Don't get yourself even in the thought process that we're gonna go and do anything there. We have hit a team for six weekend Real Madrid. Benzema looks like he's coming back. It's just gonna be a full day against Kula Bali and Cucurella. They're just gonna have a full day. They're gonna play with us. You can just you can just imagine Cucurella on that left hand side. Vinicius Junior running at him. It's just going to be like, oh. Sorry. Yeah, but I'm like, I'm, I'm, like certain, I'm like a certain yeah. club we just played. We actually have a right back that can defend. So, yeah, you know, we actually have a good right back who can defend. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's, there's some optimism. And last time we went to the Bernabeu, we won 3-2. Mm. But who do we have as manager? Huh? We have two colours manager. And not for Keen Bruno. Bruno Salter. Wait, the team will be yeah, up for it. Yeah. Trust me. It's the only competition yeah, we're in. It's the only reason our season's still alive because we're in that competition. Mm. But yeah, there we go. Mm. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll, we'll see what happens. Guys, we are going to have to wrap up though. Big up everybody that's locked in. Like, subscribe, all of that. And as always, up the Chelsea.